Hi, my name is Michael Seacrest. I'm one of the developers on the Speed Tree team, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to use forces to change the shape of your tree models. Uh, the way most people start editing tree models are by clicking on it and changing some properties of the tree. So something like, say, spine length, changing here, start angle, maybe something like branch radius. Now, every time you click on a component of the tree and edit a property over here in the property bar, you're changing something about a specific part of the tree. Uh, something that has a, a trait that is associated with each tree part, something like radius or length, start angle, disturbance, that sort of thing. If you want to track, affect the tree more globally, like try to say simulate gravity or, or, or a windswept look or things like that, our mechanism for doing that is, is modeling with forces. So let me get the tree back to its original state here. And I'll uh, start adding some forces to the scene. So let's say we want to make the branches. At level 1, droop as though they were being affected by gravity. So I'm going to click level 1, right click in the tree window, say add force, direction. So that is a direction force to the scene, and you saw the tree react a little bit. I can go change the strength of that force and make it react even more. And if I change the manipulator mode to rotation, I can spin this guy around and sort of change the look. So if you want to maybe, maybe have a windswept look or gravity or make everything point up, the point is these the branches that are associated with this force will move in the direction of the force. And notice that when I click a force model, see the generation editor is empty over here, when I select one of the forces you can see every generator that has that force assigned to it will get a little force icon, which you can see here on level 1, indicating that that force is affecting that particular generator. Uh, similarly, if you start with nothing and you select level 1, the forces that are on it will light up a little bit. So normally they're kind of pale and you can barely see them, but when you click on the generator, they show up. So that gives you an idea, just at a glance, which forces are affecting whatever it is that you happen to have selected. Now we can uh, extend this force to work on other parts of the tree. So I'm going to click on the level 2 branches, go into the forces group, and here you can see this is the direction force I added, and I will check it on. You'll see that the effect of level 2 being on now and uh, causing level 2 branches to trip a little bit as well. Um, in addition to changing the strength of the actual force, you can also change its its effect locally. So in the same place you turn it on and off, I can grab the value and increase it so I can make them droop more. And if you're familiar with Speed Tree or you've, you've watched some of other videos, you'll know that these parent curves can be used to control how much of this force value is applied to any particular thing. So I can say I'm going to change the parent level to 2 to go look all the way back up to the trunk and then use this to make the force effect less only near the top of the branches. So you can see by dragging the end of that curve down it's not really affecting the branches at the top as much as it is the ones at the bottom and I can even make it go negative and go the first way with it. And to further demonstrate the concept I'll click on the trunk and add a twist force to the trunk. And as before I can change the strength I'm going to rotate it around and change the axis on which the twist is happening. So you have a lot of options here to sort of hit large sections of the tree at once. I'm going to undo that transform and get it right back like that. Uh, something else I can do is I can come down and select two forces at two generators at once and add, say, a, a gnarl force to those. Do that to kind of gnarl it up a little bit. And then maybe come in level one, two, go on the forces group on the gnarl force that I added and get a little bit of variance, say 0.5 to have it gnarl up kind of crazy and then maybe that's too much, like 0.1. That way each individual branch is gnarling a little bit more or less than the ones beside it. And if I go in here level 2 you can see the effect once again if I take just check the gnarl force on and off so that one's not doing a whole lot on level 2. Uh, another thing we can do is even though all these forces are applied you can still go into node mode and click on individual nodes and move them around. Let's say I wanted to sort of fill in a gap right here in the tree. I can still grab this guy, move it down, bring it around, bring it maybe into position a little better. Say so I want to do that. I can also on an individual basis check the forces off. So I can take the direction force off of that node if I want to. Notice it didn't affect the other level one branches, only the one I have selected. So you're free to turn forces on and off. I could even add that twist force just to this node if that's something I wanted to do. And uh, a couple of things about forces. If you want a quick way to access them, is, is through this menu. So you can select them all. You can turn them on and off this way. Hitting that button turns them on and off. You can select them individually this way. You can also select them. Say you want to say, 
I want to edit this null for so you can click it in here and it'll go off and select and show you where it is in, in the scene. And the last thing I want to show are uh, localized force effects. So I'm going to select one and two again and add a magnet force. I'm going to turn attenuation on and you can change fall off distances and things like that if you want to. Let's change manipulation mode back to translate make sure I got this guy in the middle of the tree and as I move it through the tree as it comes close to these parts you can see that it's it's becoming it's affecting the parts only within that radius that's attenuation zone and I can up the strength in there to sort of amplify this effect so I can, as I move this thing around the tree will respond to it so you can use magnets to pull them around you can use direction forces to make them look like gravity's pulling down or wind sweeping across so there's other types of forces like I can change this force type to say a curl force and have it curl up the branches that it's that it's coming close to and as before I can change the curl axis by rotating it around things like that uh, well that concludes this video thanks for watching I look for more instructional videos on the Speedtree YouTube channel and at speedtree.com